The other part is Ukraine. We are pushing, in fact, engaging in a hot war with Russia at this moment, which has upended energy prices around the world and is getting worse. The U.S. Congress has somehow earmarked more than $90 billion to Ukraine just this year. That's double what we spent annually in Afghanistan. That's far more than Russia's entire annual military budget. But it's still not enough for the president of Ukraine, Zelensky. He doesn't ask the U.S. Congress for money. He demands it. Here he is over the last three months. Watch this. We absolutely need the United States to show leadership and give Ukraine the air defense system. But believe me, it, it's not even nearly enough to cover the civilian infrastructure, schools, hospitals, universities, homes of Ukrainians. We have two uh, key financial needs of the country. That's $38 billion to make up for the deficit of our budget for next year, and other $17 billion that were verified by the World Bank and needed to rebuild the critical infrastructure. We would really like for the support, especially the amount of support, to stay the same and to have this joint support from the U.S. society and above all U.S. taxpayers, because at the end of the day, this is not the money of the government, but the money of the people. Do you know that guy? Who is that guy? He's some Ukrainian corrupt strongman, really, and he's demanding money from us? The gall of that guy. Where does he get off? El Todd Wood is the founder of CD Media and a former special operations pilot. He joins us today. Todd, thanks so much for coming on. So the question of Zelensky is where does he get this attitude? He's not a supplicant. He is someone who's demanding the U.S. Congress fund his government, not just his war, but the salaries of his bureaucrats. Like, where does he get this attitude? Look, uh, Zelensky used, was brought to power by an, an oligarch named Ehor Kolomoisky, which he recently went after and targeted for persecution in Ukraine. So that tells me something that uh, Zelensky now has a, a bigger and more important and more powerful and more rich benefactor, and that being the Biden administration, the World Economic Forum, and, and the cabal that's uh, pushing all this agenda on the United States. So Zelensky is not working for the people of Ukraine. They're suffering massively. You know, we have had a team on the ground for, since Maidan in 2014, and we're being told now for months, they're saying, where is all this aid that's supposed to be coming here? We're not seeing anything. We're having teams having to go into Poland with our own funds and buy food for the people, buy medical supplies. A large percentage of the Ukrainian population right now has no water or electricity or heat going into the winter. Think about that. And a lot of them in these high-rise, you know, Soviet-built buildings. So it, it's really a disaster. Zelensky is working for a bigger agenda, not for the Ukrainian people, that's for sure. So $90 billion, there's been no audit of where that money went. Democrats in the Congress mm -hmm. are fighting an audit. Why wouldn't they want to know? Well, because approximately, you know, this is, you got to realize, this is the varsity team of money launderers in Ukraine. We're estimating that only 30 percent of the, the, the supplies and, and, and military aid is actually getting to the, where it needs or is supposed to go. There's been evidence, which we talked about on your show recently, of a plane crash in Greece where arms were being shipped overseas. And so uh, th this money is not getting where it's supposed to go. The, uh, a lot of this money is going to offshore. You know, we're talking about homes. Uh, you know, there's credible reports that a lot of these uh, Ukrainian officials have, have bought uh, property offshore. They don't want peace. They want the money train to continue for the, you know, defense contractors in the U.S. And, and I, I'm fascinated to see what's going to happen when the, the House gets taken over by the GOP and hopefully this money train stops. So we'll see. I hope so. And then you see decent, reasonable, conservative people, nice people like Joni Ernst, backing this. I mean, a lot of Republicans need to wake yeah. up and understand they've been had in a, in a very profound way. El Todd Wood, I appreciate well, you coming on tonight.